So we've solved differential equations before. Um, a differential equation is just a derivative. And when we're asked to solve, that means to find the exact equation of which this that we're given is the derivative. And we usually have to have some kind of initial values so that we can find the particular solution for this derivative. So we're given a derivative, dy dx, of 6x squared plus 6x plus 2, and we're given an initial value. Now these are considered separable differential equations, and you'll see why. Instead of being given f prime, we're given dy dx. So I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. I'm going to multiply dx onto the other side. So I've got dy equals 6x squared plus 6x plus 2 with a dx. So the idea here is we're going to have the y's on one side and the x's on the other. Keep them separated. So if I am finding the original, that means I need to find the antiderivative. Now the antiderivative dy is just y, technically plus c, but if we're going to have a plus c on this side, we can combine them on the right side. The antiderivative of 6x squared is going to be 6x cubed divided by 3. This would be 6x squared divided by 2 plus 2x, technically divided by 1, plus c. Let's make that a little bit prettier. We can divide. This is considered the general solution. This is all of the equations that if I take the derivative, I get what I started with. But we've been given an initial value. So this helps us find the particular solution. So we are given that f of negative 1 is 2. In other words, if I plug in negative 1 for x, my answer should be 2. So I'm going to plug in the information given. 2 equals 2 times negative 1 cubed plus 3 times negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus c. Well, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. This would be negative 2 plus c. That gives me a negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1 plus c. So 3 is c. Now that we've been given that information, we know that our specific solution, and well, they call it an f of x, so f of x is 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 3. That is the specific particular solution. Ooh, number two looks kind of tricky. Maybe we can do some algebraic mumbo jumbo here to, to make it prettier. Because um, that, that's kind of ugly. I know I'm going to move the dx over, but what could I do to make that prettier? Well, that's really 2x to the 1 half. which means I'm dividing each term by that. So, that would be 1 over 2x to the 1 half plus 6. And if I have x to the 3 halves over x to, over x to the 1 half, that would be left with x to the 2 over 2, which would just be x. So dy, whoops, I forgot the dx, equals 1 half x to the negative 1 half plus 6x 
plus 6x dx. Now we can take the antiderivative of each side. Zoop, zoop. The antiderivative of dy is y. This would be x to the positive 1 half divided by 1 half, so that would just be a 1, plus 6x squared divided by 2, which would be 3x, plus some c. Now we need to plug in the information given. So y is 2 when x is 0. Oh, that's kind of nice. 2 is c. And they gave it to us as a function, so our final answer needs to be in the form of a function of x. I can write x to the 1 half as square root of x plus 3x plus 2. Now in the next two examples, you'll notice that each of them have, I mean, we have x and y's in this. So I'm going to do a little cross multiplying. So 2y times dy equals x squared plus 2x dx. So now I've got the y's on one side, the x's on the other. So, it's time to take the antiderivative. So, on the left side, the antiderivative 2y would be y squared. Antiderivative x squared would be x cubed divided by 3. This would be x squared plus c. We're given some information. We're given that when x is 0, y is 2. So I'm going to plug in 2 for the y and 0 for the x. So c is 4. Now here's where this one gets a little tricky. I've got y squared equals, um, I'll write it as one-third x cubed plus x squared plus 4. Now that looks great, right? Except for we're supposed to write it as a function, f of x. And I've got y squared, not just y. So how do I undo y squared? Well, I'd have to take the square root of both sides. Now we have to be very, very careful. When you're taking the square root of both sides, I'm sorry, that marker's really light, you have two options, right? Y either equals the positive square root of one-third x cubed plus x squared plus 4, or y equals negative square root of one-third x cubed plus x squared plus 4. We just need to know which one is the right one, or if both are correct. So if I plug back in my initial value of 0 into this one, I get 0 plus 0 plus 4. So I get y equals the square root of 4. That one works. Over here, I would get y equals negative square root of 4, which would be negative 2. So this one does not work. Our answer was positive, so we only have the positive version. Let's try the next one. We want to get all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other. So it's going to end up being something like that. This one's going to go there and this is going to go there. So I'd have y dy. That's funny equals x plus 2 dx. To undo the derivative, we're going to take the integral by size. The integral of y would be y squared over 2, and this would be x squared over 2 plus 2x 
plus C. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my initial value. So, negative 3 squared divided by 2 equals 1 squared divided by 2 plus 2 times 1 plus C. So here's 9 fourths, or 9 halves, I've tried to square both sides, equals 1 half plus 2 plus C. So 9 halves minus 1 half would be 8 halves, which is 4, minus 2 would leave me with 2. So 2 is C. Now again, I end up with, I had y squared over 2 equals x squared over 2 plus 2x plus 2. Well, first off, to solve for y, oops, I'm going to need to multiply both sides by 2. So I've got y squared equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. When you take the square root of both sides, you're going to have to put a plus or minus. Now, I wrote them out separately that time, that first time. It's either positive square root or negative the square root. Well, when I plug in 1, 1 plus 5 plus 4, I mean, 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 4 is 9. So y equals plus or minus the square root of 9. Well, ours was negative. So this needs to be the negative version. Since y was negative in this problem. Next example. Here we go, let's see, dy dx equals this. Now, I need to move the dx over there, I need to move that over here, so I'm gonna end up dividing by y minus two. So this would be one over y minus two dy equals x to the fourth dx. I'm gonna take the antiderivative of each side. Shoop, shoop. Oh, let's see. That's in the denominator. That's ln of the absolute value of y minus 2. Over here, I'd add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, plus c. We're going to plug in our initial value so that we can find So the ln of 0 minus 2 equals 0 to the fifth divided by 5 plus c. That's negative 2, but absolute value makes it a positive 2 equals c. So ln of the absolute value of y minus 2 equals, and I'm going to write that as 1 fifth x to the fifth plus ln of 2. Now, this is going to take some reviewing. Let's remember how to undo a natural log, because we want to get y by itself. Well, ln is a logarithm base e. So, the absolute value of y minus 2 is equal to e to 1 fifth x to the fifth plus natural log of 2. Because, if you didn't remember that rule, if we have a logarithm with the base of an argument equals something, this base to that exponent equals 
the argument of the logarithm. So I did the same thing here. ln is base e, so e to this whole thing, that's my new exponent, equals what was in the argument. Now let's see if I can clean this up just a little bit. Well, I know that if I'm adding exponents, that's like having, actually, we don't add, need to clean it up too much because they don't care about us having um, simplified answers. Silly me. But I do know that either y minus 2 equals the positive e to the 1 fifth x to the fifth plus natural log of 2, or y minus 2 equals negative e to the 1 fifth x to the fifth plus natural log of 2, because it's absolute value. So those are two options. What happens, let's see, this would be y equals 2 plus e to the 1 fifth x to the fifth plus natural log of 2. If I plug in 0 there, when x equals 0, I get 2 plus e to the natural log of 2, which would be, ooh, 2 plus 2? So that's not right. This one does not give me a correct answer. f of 0 does not equal 0. Try this one. y equals 2 minus e to the 1 fifth x to the fifth plus natural log of 2. What happens when I plug in 0 into this one? Well, I have 2 minus e to the natural log of 2, which is 2 minus 2, which is 0. So, the correct function is 2 minus e to the 1 fifth x to the fifth plus natural log of 2. Now, this could have been cleaned up a little bit better, so if it was in a multiple choice, um, just to let you remember how to clean that up a touch, this would be the same as having e to the 1 fifth x to the fifth times e to the natural log of 2, which is just 2. So these two statements are equivalent. Well, actually, all three of these are equivalent. On a free response, you would be fine stopping here. On multiple choice, they would probably have the answer reduced down to that. Six, if you feel like pausing it and checking to see if you got an idea here, go for it. Otherwise, separate them out. I'd have dy. I'd have to divide by that. Multiply by that one over there, so I have 1 over x squared dx. Well, this would be the natural log of y minus 1 equals, okay, so that's x to the negative 2. Let me rewrite that as x to the negative 2 dx. I forgot to show that I was taking the integral. Oh, goodness, bad me. Add one to the exponent. Divide by the new exponent, plus c. So the natural log of y minus 1 equals negative 1 over x plus c. Finding the general one is pretty easy. Now we need to plug in 0 to find the specific one. So 0 is going in for y, and 2 is going in for x. This is 0 minus 1, but absolute value, so that's natural log of 1 equals negative 1 half plus c. Natural log of 1 is 0, so 1 half is c. So let's go back. 
we have the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 1 equals negative 1 over x plus 1 half. Natural log means log base e. So it's going to be absolute value of y minus 1 equals e to the negative 1 over x plus 1 half. Now when we split up an absolute value, y minus 1 either equals positive e to negative 1 over x plus 1 half, or y minus 1 equals negative e to the negative 1 over x plus 1 half. Let's see which one works. If I go back and plug in 2, negative 1 half plus 1 half is going to give me 0. e to the 0 is 1. So let's see. The first one, I'm, I'm going to rewrite them both so it's a little bit easier, easier to do. This would be plus 1. So 1 plus e to the negative 1 over x plus 1 half. Or y equals 1 minus. So I solve for y on both of them. Just added 1. So we said if we plug in 2 for x, we get negative 1 half plus 1 half, which is 0. e to the 0 is 1. So this side gives me 1 plus 1. It promises to get 0, so that's not right. e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so this is the correct answer. So the next are some practice problems that you can start and then we can go over them in class.